Hello everyone. Here we go. This is my attempt to make some kind of gluten-free meat. It is one of the hardest things to try and do, believe it or not. Now my flavors are here, but we're going to try and see how this is going to come out. It's still too hot, I guess, to open this up, but I'm looking at it. Here we go. It looks like it looks like my uh, the one I make with the vital wheat gluten, but you can tell that this is far from the same type of texture. I just want to show you. We have to be very careful. This is what the meat's gonna look like when we break it apart. It's gonna look like small bits rather than shreds. You really can't make a shredded gluten-free meat, but we can make it in in chunks, I guess. Yeah, not, I'm gonna be back at the drawing board for sure. Okay, so here we go. This is what it looks like. It does crumble. I'm gonna try and open this, it's a little hot. I'm gonna see the inside. It does crumble. You cannot shred this meat, that's for sure. But again, you can make it where you can make like bits and pieces this way. So we're gonna see how this is gonna come out. Here we go. You will have more of a chunky type of meat. There is nothing shreddable about this meat. Impossible. It's impossible to shred this unless you uh, basically, um, unless you basically um, put something in there that's shreddable, like a mushroom or uh, other ingredients. We can break it into chunks, and we're gonna fry this up in a pan to make your pieces a little small. It's a little hard to handle, but you can put this in. in a pan with some vegetables and I'm sure you can get something delicious out of it. And that's what you're gonna get if it's gluten free. Now, I've tried many, many recipes. You can probably slice this if you wanna do like a, a cutlet. Let me see what it looks like when I slice it. Just to see what it's like. I guess you can slice your meat, but you're not going to get that shreddable meat. Impossible. You're not going to get that whatsoever. But, again, if you're going to make a stir fry, I bet this is going to be delicious. So, it, you're, it's still doable. But you're not going to get, you're not going to get shreds like you would if you're doing uh, your recipe with the uh, Vital Wheat Gluten. Okay, I'm just going to fry some of this up and I'm going to show you what it looks like but again like I said because it is not vital wheat gluten you're not going to get uh, the shreddable meat you're going to get more like bits more like a stew type uh, meat and hopefully when I fry this up it won't break on me but it's always good to have for someone who is uh, gluten intolerant you can make something that has almost like little chunks of meat in it or meat like pieces in your recipe. So I'm just going to fry some of this up and see what it looks like once it's done. There we go. Okay, like I said, the uh, you're not going to get the shredded looking type of meat, but you will get something that might resemble some kind of meat when you're making a little stir fry. So we're going to see what we can pull out of this. Now this meat is already flavored, so I don't have to overly flavor. So I'm just gonna throw some vegetables like mushrooms and maybe some greens and just make a little stir fry. Uh, I buy so many hot Asian peppers that they end up shriveling up, but they're still good to use, so you don't wanna throw this away. You could either cut it up or you could crumble, depending on how dry it is. This one's still not that dry to crumble, but I can cut it up either with scissors or a knife. Okay, we're going to just throw some of this gluten-free meat. 
for someone who's gluten intolerant you can still be able to make something that is almost meat like and I'm sure it's going to be just as delicious so while this is cooking up I'm going to cut some onion you know what I just thought of something and you know what I'm going to give it a try and then maybe post another video but I just thought of something that might help make something for us for the people that are trying to make a gluten free version so here we go we're going to put some onion in here very simple um, I did use a Cajun uh, spice in my meat so the meat is flavored so I'm not going to do anything Asian like but I will add some onion I've got some mushrooms And I'm sure this is going to be just as delicious. Beautiful mushrooms. And I'm using these nice little Asian uh, button-like type of mushrooms. And we'll see how this meat holds up when we cook it in the pan. These I pick up at the Asian market, and they're almost like uh, in the broccoli family. They're really, really nice. peppers in there. So it holds its own while we're stirring it. So it will be a denser type meat, but you know what? When you're ne when you're not eating animal products, I don't see that it would be anything so horrible to have. I think it would be great. There we go. We're going to add just a little bit of water. We're going to have it almost like a steam. There, is my there we go. Steam it up. some more Cajun spice to this. Looks 
looks like meat, right? It even looks like pieces of seitan, but it's not, guys. There you go. Keep it covered. What it does is going to let that meat, uh, those pieces of meat, it's going to add moisture to it. And it's going to just give it more of a softer meat rather than a crumbly meat. Because, like I said, this is not... Uh, vital wheat gluten it. It's made with oat flour and you want to be able to have that texture under your teeth that it's like meat but it's not meat and like I said we can't make miracles. Unfortunately if you want it to be more meat like it would have to be vital wheat gluten but there's a lot of people that are gluten intolerant so this is a great alternative. And it seems to hold its own too, which is nice. I'm just going to taste one for flavor. The taste is good, but like I said, for someone who's not able to eat it, this is a good alternative for you. There we go. We're going to put some salt and black pepper. And there you go guys gluten free dish no gluten whatsoever pieces that resemble meat taste wise you know it's not seitan but you have that little bite that you get when you eat meat that texture under your teeth that a lot of people are missing when they turn in, uh, they turn to a vegan lifestyle. They, a lot of them, uh, crave that texture of animal products under their teeth. So here you go. That can just give you that satisfaction that you need and make your transition a little different. Like I said, this is still under test. You can do something that slightly resembles uh, vegan meat. Now there's something else I want to show you. Here we go. We're gonna put this up. Uh, this one we cooked with a little bit of water, so you'll see that the meat looks a little different here. I'm going to show you how this looks compared to this piece of meat that was just steamed, uh, that was just steamed in aluminum paper. You want your meat to have more of that texture. So what you can do is, after it's been steamed, is you can add it in some water and cook whatever meat you have left. There we go. We're just going to cook up pieces of this meat and we'll have it ready in the refrigerator. There we go. This way all you really have to do is just throw it in, just throw it into a stir fry. So I'm going to do half for now just to show you that it will hold its shape. You can make it all now if you want. Just cook it all down first and then easily trans, easily transfer it to your uh, cooking dish. And look at that. It really does look like pieces of, pieces of meat. And this is a gluten alternative, guys. But you do need to cook this meat up a bit. Otherwise, it's going to be a very crumbly, crumbly meat. Uh, because I did it in the frying pan, I did add some water and then steamed it. But if you put some in some water and broth, you will actually get a nice little texture that won't crumble under your teeth. But it's more of a meat type bite. Might as well do it all. Might as well do it all, right guys? I'm just going to cook it all up. This had to be steamed first and then we cook it in water. Yeah, I don't want to make too many small pieces, but I have an idea. I better write it down before I forget. There we go. See how it holds its shape? 
We don't want to over mix it either. We're just going to cook it up a little bit. I will transfer it here we go we will transfer it here it's going to be easier for us and you'll know when it's ready because it won't look as dry it's going to be more of a meat like look to it I'm going to bring it up first to a boil and then we're going to lower it right away and we're going to simmer it come to a boil we will now simmer it and we're gonna do this Whoop. I need my spoon yeah gently just move it around and we're just gonna simmer these pieces until it absorbs some of this water there we go Notice how it's starting to look a little more meat-like. Almost like a stew meat, guys. Add a little bit of olive oil. So just to show you all the different ways you can actually cook up this gluten-free meat, just taste one. Mm -hmm. There we go. Keep cooking it down. And then you could just simply take this meat and put it in a Tupperware and put it in the fridge for whenever you need to make a nice little stir fry. There's my beautiful dish just to show you how simple and how beautiful your dishes could be. Now this one here, I just basically took it and steamed the meat in the pan with the vegetables. But otherwise, you could have your meat all prepared like I'm doing right now. And all we have to do is add it to our dishes later on. Okay, so you can now store the meat the way it is, just put in a Tupperware, or you can lightly brown this by adding some olive oil and just cooking it up in the pan. That's for gravy. If you add more flavors to this, add more water, you could actually make a nice little poutine out of that. And here is your gluten-free bits of meat. There's the inside, delicious. It really does the trick. And it's gluten-free, guys. videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawson Kitchen, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends.